2011, the Indignados, the three months occupation of the Central Square in Madrid, of Sol, that the international media call a name as the Spanish Revolution, whereas uh, for us in Spain it's mainly the Spanish awakening, because the revolution or evolution hasn't come as yet. 15th of May 2012, mobilized by youth from different disciplines and backgrounds, hundreds of thousands of people, as you might well see, started to go back in the square of Seoul in order to honor the anniversary of King Theme, the 15th of May. At 6 p.m., flows of people started entering in the square. They were coming from all directions, from the north, the east, the west, the south. They were clapping, they were cheering, they were hitting metallic objects and casseroles, and they were being accompanied by drums. The energy of that was in this small square was immense. You could feel everyone's heart beating. The objective of this gathering, as I said before, was to honor the anniversary of Kintheme, was to celebrate, to celebrate the initiatives that started back in 2011 and they were being delivered every single day in the neighborhoods of Madrid. Organized defense for people that were losing their houses, rehabilitated uh, houses that were empty, and now they were houses for poor people and people who didn't have a house anymore. Uh, collectives, um, time banks, consuming groups. This uh, gathering, its purpose was about celebration, was about reconnecting and was about sharing new initiatives and inviting in more. So it was back in 2011 when uh, 20 young people uh, mobilized this massive amount of the Spanish citizens and showcase to them that they could not expect any more things from their government. It was about time that they could become responsible citizens and they could take the situation in their hands. And this is what it happened. These 20 people and many more, many more young people are changing every day our reality. They are redefining in macro and in micro level their societies. I'm lucky enough to have many friends, to be working with many people, many young people, to be collaborating, talking and living with them. And the last uh, two years I'm doing an uh, investigation with uh, youth entrepreneurs all around the world and I'm also participating in communities of entrepreneurs, artists and cyclists. And what I want to tell you today is about the key insights that I have through my interaction with them. What are the principles, the practices, and the resources of these young doers? First of all, collaboration. Collaboration is about collective work. It's about seeing the things that bring us together. It, today, we have a lot of things, we have many problems, correct? We have many problems today, and not just one team can approach it, can solve it. Not just one team can handle it. We have to work together. We have to see what are our common problems, set common goals, and give space and trust to people to contribute in their own way. Today, in order to solve these problems, we need a critical mass of people who are taking solution-oriented actions. When the crisis reaches its roots, rules and comprehension is lost. What the people are tend to do are uh, they try to coincide, coincide and create close communities or they are trying to differentiate themselves completely from the others. But this is not the solution. Let's see. Third leadership. Many of the young uh, entrepreneurs are uh, working in collectives. And this is what I want to talk to you about, the circle. The circle is a rather old but yet abraded way of deciding and working together. The circle is about collectiveness, the circle is about transparency, and it's about equality. When you're in a circle, everyone is the same. When you're in a circle, you can see everyone and everyone can see you. The circle is also about collective action and individual responsibility. Collective action means that if a group wants to bring change, all the people who are part of it have to be responsible for something. It's also about collective responsibility and individual action. That means that in order for a group to be responsible for something, everybody that is part of it has to act and deliver. Radical openness. It's all about sharing. Don't be afraid to share your ideas. 
If you want to see them happening, if you want to see them implemented, you certainly have to share them. Success. 10% of it is the idea and 90% of it is execution. There is a very nice uh, theory that from a behavioral economy that is called the toothbrush theory and it reads as, reads as follows. Ideas are like toothbrushes. Everybody has one, everybody needs one, everybody wants one, but no one wants to use somebody else's. This is exactly the bias that we have to, to get rid of if we want to see innovation flourishing. Many great inventors were affected by this bias, such as Thomas Edison, who was trying to undermine the superior innovations of Nikola Tesla. However, if we see the history of innovation, contrary to the popular belief, innovation is rarely, is rarely a seamless breakthrough. It's not a very intelligent and well-gifted uh, genius that is managing to create a supreme innovation. The innovation comes with collaboration, with try and failure, and with hacking or innovation of things that were happening in the past or things that are happening all around. Innovation starts with taking the other people's toothbrushes. But in order to take the other people's toothbrush and in order to share your own, you have to participate. Many times we have a lot of questions. We say, to who should I talk? How should I solve this? Well, how do I do this? Participating in different groups and in different projects, what happens is that you have access to skill, insight and networks. In addition, working with others is the biggest fun. Now we'll tell you a story about a young English boy. This is Rocco. Rocco went for an internship in Sierra Leone. We heard the story about Sierra Leone before. So Rocco, what he did was that he went for his internship there. He was really, really upset. Why? Because the kids there didn't have school. They wouldn't go to school. So when he went back from his internship in the UK, he mobilized resource and he managed to create a school in his beloved village. Everything was looking very fine, very nice. However, in the, during the four months, he reached to be with no student in the school. He felt, he felt that he had failed, of course. However, he didn't quit. He tried to emerge in the, in the current routine, in the current society, so that he can understand what is the thing that he's doing wrong. And he found it. Rocco, created a, Rocco understood that the majority of the parents were, were farmers and they needed their kids to work with them in their fields. In addition, the mediators, the people who would take their product, the corpse, and they would sell them in the city, they were robbing them really, really bad. They were buying them in very low price and they were selling them in really high price. The result was that Rocco, was, that Rocco decided to create not a school for kids, but a school for parents, a school for farmers that gave them the access to, ha to more modern techniques in doing agriculture and also equipped them with the skill to negotiate and sell. These are the two lessons that we, that we learned from, the, from Rocco's story. Number one, try and fail. We said it before as well, so Tiris mentioned it quite sometimes. Well, it, it's very important to fail and fail fast and fail cheap. Why? Because you can identify the bugs and fix them really fast. The second lesson that we hear, that we learn, is, a, is that we have to shut up and listen. If we want to help someone, we really have to understand that person. This is why we have two ears and only one mouth. All of the above sounds interesting, I suppose, and I think that they are not so extraordinary things. However, as critical human beings that you are, I'm sure that you think, well, how all this can happen? How all this can be implemented? How is the reality that we are currently in? We will all agree that we are living in bi bipolar systems. What is happening is that we hear, youth are great, youth are the future, we believe in you. But at the same time, when you are asked to, be, to work in a job, you don't get responsibilities, neither decision-making power. On the other side, we hear, everybody should become an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is great. However, we don't chase the laws and we don't canalize funds to support unemployed and youth to create their own businesses. We say, innovation, things have to change. But when you go with a new idea and you propose it, people say, no, this is not the way that things are happening here. Another very important thing, youth unemployment is in 67% today in Greece. This is horrible. The few people that are, that are 
happy and lucky to have a job, some friends of mine also passed through this story, this is why I'm, I'm sharing it, they were somehow blackmailed from their bosses and they were asked to become freelancers so that they would be able to keep working in their jobs. If not, they would be fired. Being a freelance means the following thing with a salary of 800, of 800 euros. In Greece, you have to pay 430 euros for your, your social security. In Spain, you have to pay 255. And in the UK, ta-da, only 12. So you can see the situation that is happening here today. I'm sure that more of barriers are starting to raise up in your heads. And yes, it's a very tough situation that we have to operate and thrive in. However, I would ask you to stop. Stop, because all of these are simply excuses. What I will try to do now is that I will try to share with you the common excuses that I have heard from different youth people in order to avoid taking responsibility. And if you have in your heads one, two or all of them, I hope that I will manage to get to support you and help you get rid of them once and for all. I don't want an entrepreneur, so I'm not doing anything. Fair enough. Don't be an entrepreneur. You don't need to become an entrepreneur in order to change the world. In fact, entrepreneurship is not the only solution. And I truly believe that not everybody should become an entrepreneur. Why? Because entrepreneurs, in order to change the world, they need fundraisers, investors, they need communication specialists, they need financial managers, they need advocates, they need lawyers, they need volunteers. There are so many problems in this world that the only thing you have to do is to participate, to take action. We have to, to create projects and initiatives that create positive social and economic return and become active citizens and who take solution-oriented actions. I don't know what to do. We have many problems, it's true. However, we have a lot of information around them. So what you have to do is just say, okay, what makes me angry? This thing, I will solve it. Politicians are corrupted, they took out our money. All the generations suck. Stop complaining, if you do. It's time for action. It's time for uh, creating proposals and it's time for giving constructive feedback. It's not time for blaming or accusing. People around me are negative with my ideas. Beware. The people who say no and the people who say yes are dangerous. Why? Because the people who say no, they, are, they will completely stop you and the people who say yes, they will completely not. Both of these things will lead you to failure. Keep close to you the what-if people. The what-if people are the ones who will add value to the things that you are thinking and the, the things that you are taking action to. Adults do not understand me. Well, having an adult in your side is very critical because the adults are the ones who can bring us to the ground, challenge us, support us, open to us networks. I'm happy and I'm lucky enough to be in a community of youth who is actually who doesn't break with the, with the past. They actually, we actually work together in order to help the new and the future to unveil. All the, the 40 more or less uh, interviews that I've done of social youth, of youth entrepreneurs and more than 500 people with whom we have done think tanks, all of them have an adult by their side supporting them. I don't know how to handle my ideas. Well, you have to choose one, you have to practice it and you have to prototype it. If things do not go well, let it go or evolve the model. Here is um, the group of my, one of my very beloved friends in Spain, Mikel, who created this eco community in Spain. These guys they took some fields and they created the organic fruits. They believed that by that they would become not rich, but at least happy to live ever after. Soon they realized that was not the solution. What they did then was to create marmalade, soap, bread, beer. They also organized conferences and workshops in the village. And this is how they make it happen. I'm too young. This is Roti, 19 years old, from Kuala Lumpur. He is actually a, one of the biggest organizers of conferences and expos in Kuala Lumpur. He told me that his secret was professionalism. We are all young, and this is true. We cannot change that. 
But what we can change is our attitude. We have to be professional. We have to deliver what we promise. And if we don't make it, we have to take care of the people and not let them down. Good accounts make good friends, partners and couples. I don't have the right people in my circle that can help me. <laughs> well, this is Philippos. Most of you know him. <laughs> Philippos uh, wanted to do an internship in, uh, in Argentina with ASOCA, a social entrepreneurship organization. What happened was that he sent them an email. They never replied to him. He called them. They could not reach an agreement. What he did was that he went there, he knocked their door, and he said, I want an internship. They gave it to him. So what we understand from, uh, from Philippos' stories is that in order to find people that we have work with, we have to get out of our comfort zone. And sometimes that means getting out of our house. We have to participate and engage in initiatives and projects. I don't have money. Money is a trivial game. Finding resource as well. When we were 19 years old, we were organizing conferences with ISEC for four days for more than 200 delegates with zero budget. Money is very important, but should not be a halting cause. You can find money in many different ways, but most importantly, you have to start. You have to have a good story in order to, in order to attract finance and in order to ensure it. If you don't invest in your idea, no one else will. I, want my I don't want my studies to fall behind. This is Luis Ivan and Alberto. I love them very much. They are 16 years old. They are from uh, Asturias in Spain. They created, they designed an operating system like the one that you know, EOS, uh, Windows and so on. They created their own operating system based on free software that is called Asturix. Asturix is now used in all the schools in Asturias as their main operating system. They still go to school. I will tell you a small an uh, anecdote and my beloved professor uh, Nicolau asked me before <laughs> if I finished school. The truth is yeah, that when I, I was working six years in ISEC, when I came back from the Netherlands, I had 22 courses still left. This is more or less half of my degree in the uh, Department of <laughs> Management, Science and Technology. In fact, I finished these classes in only one year. Meanwhile, I was working and I had good grades. My parents do not approve of me doing my business or participating in initiatives. Well, this is Javi. He's 22 years old. He's from Malaga. This is his robot cat. He makes robots. He created a business that is uh, repairing microchips. As all the parents of uh, the Spanish uh, territory, they see as a bright future for their kids, the, um, becoming a public servant. Sounds familiar, no? Well. Uh, Javi, what he did was that he wanted to become an entrepreneur. Their parents completely disapproved of it, but he proved them wrong. And why he proved them wrong? Because he made a successful business with the support of his friends. Support can be found apart from the family, in friends, in professors, in neighbors, in friends of friends. In fact, what you should do with your parents? In that case, you should engage them. You should, uh, you should share your... Uh, your uh, evolution, you should share your updates, and you should ask for advice. My dad, who is here today as well, when I was talking to him about social entrepreneurship, he was very skeptical. He was like, ah, multinationals, and okay. However, now he's one of the most important uh, supporters to create our own social business. My friends do not like my ideas and do not want to participate. I agree, doing things with friends is the biggest fun. However, you will be surprised on how many people that you don't know share the same values with you, would like to help you, and can give you tremendous access to networks, insight, and experience. I cannot be myself and make it happen. Well, the, the opinion of the others, it's theirs, and they can keep it for themselves. Who we are is not a limitation. This is Rasha, 23 years old. She is from Palestine. And she created an incubator for tech startups in Ramallah. She is young, she is a girl, she is Muslim, and she is working in the tech industry. And she is making it happen. Go and tell Tourasha that sex, religion,
culture or the way or, or the work or field is a barrier. With this mindset, I'm standing in front of you today. We have to participate in the transformation of our country. Should I stay or should I go? Many of you might be thinking. It's up to you. But you have to decide that wherever you are, being far, being close, doesn't matter. What matters is that we have to step up, propose, participate and invite. Do mistakes one after the other. Don't get old as yet. I don't see a better moment to start. Good luck.